Good morning and welcome to our third installment of Morelli USA's webinar series. We apologize for any technical difficulties on this one. Uh, I'm Bob Niederhauser, Area Sales Manager for the Western half of the United States and Canada, effectively left of the Mississippi and a couple of additional Gulf Coast states. Today's topic is going to be Morelli Voltage Regulators, our analog and digital options and what's available for specific frames of our GENs. Today's agenda, uh, there is a question and answer session that will be going on in the chat window. So if you do have any specific questions you wanna ask at any point, you'll have not one, but two applications engineers uh, addressing those questions. And uh, for those that uh, are interested at the very end of the presentation, we'll compile all of the questions, the appropriate answers, and we'll send those out to all of the attendees later on this afternoon. Uh, what are we gonna cover today? Automatic voltage regulators, what they do, how they work, uh, standard Morelli analog options, our digital AVR options, and how we compare to some of our more notorious or uh, noteworthy competitors. On the power generation side, for those that aren't familiar with it, we go from effectively eight KVA unity power factor all the way up to about 14,000 KVA. Obviously, the size is gonna be entirely dependent on your application, whether it's land-based, whether it's offshore, whether it's uh, air cooled, whether it's going to be water jacket cooled, totally enclosed water after cooled, etc. Uh, and it's also going to be dependent upon your market. Uh, we identify six different markets cogen, industrial, power gen, oil and gas, hydropower, and marine. Uh, for your particular application, we encourage you to reach out to your area sales manager and he'll work out work with you to develop a Morelli solution to your application. Let's get into the uh, functional principles of an AVR. Uh, it's fourfold. Uh, the duties of the excitation system provide a variable DC current for a short time overload. It controls the terminal voltage with suitable accuracy. It ensures a fast transient response with a minimal voltage drop and it ensures stable operation when the generator is connected to the utility or when it's in parallel with other gens. Taking a look at how an AVR works, we have a standard system that reads the output voltage of the generator through a voltage sensing device and automatically adjusts that signal to the excitation system in order to keep the output voltage stable at a predetermined value. One of the ways that Morelli looks at improving motor starting and voltage drop is we use an auxiliary winding. An auxiliary winding is an additional winding that is embedded in the stator and sends a signal directly to the AVR to give it a more powerful signal Therefore, better motor starting, better voltage drop characteristics. We also use what's called a Vericomp device. The Vericomp is a, for lack of a better term, an overboost uh, system that uses a CT to sense the current, the output current, feeds that back into the Vericomp rectifies that signal and then adds it to the signal to the AVR to give you that boost for, typically you see these type of devices used when you have large AC motors that are going to be connected to the unit. And last, of course, permanent magnet generators. Uh, these devices bolt on to the end of the uh, main rotor uh, because of its residual magnetism. It has a very strong and clean signal and supplies that power directly to the AVR. And these are primarily used when you do require a 300% over uh, load capability on the alternator. Taking a look at what Morelli offers as its standard voltage regulators with our products 
out of stock in Atlanta in our two manufacturing facilities in Italy and Malaysia. Uh, please note that Morelli uh, for low voltage uh, looks at basically a thousand volts and less as low voltage. Uh, another thing to note is our frame size designation on the left hand side of the chart. Our frame sizes are the dimension from the mounting of the excuse me from the bottom of the mounting foot to the center line of the shaft. Uh, you'll notice at the top it's a 160 frame. That is a 160 millimeter center line of the shaft to the bottom of the mounting foot. On the 800 frame, as you can imagine, 800 millimeters from the center line of the shaft down to the mounting feet. The standard offerings for our units. Uh, uh, as noted there is for the 160 to 250 frame is the Mark 5X. That 250 frame is effectively 300 EKW. Uh, the next uh, voltage regulator for the 315 up to the 450 frame is our MEC 20, which is a very popular and I'll go over that in a little bit. Uh, we use the MGC1 with a Vericomp option on the frames 500, 560 and the MGC2, it's, it's twin uh, on the 630 frames and larger units. And then depending upon what options you also choose, we have different voltage regulators uh, that we provide as standard when you have a PMG, when you need a UL option for your specific site, or when you need a Marine, a Marine Society approved uh, regulator for an offshore application. And then what we typically recommend to our client base when they're looking at just purchasing a voltage regulator only, which would be interchangeable with other generator manufacturers. Looking at how the next step up when we go to medium voltage, Morelli's nomenclature for medium voltage is the equivalent of 1000 volts to 6900 volts. We call high voltage, just for us, we call high voltage anything larger than 6,900 volts. Yes, I know it's still medium voltage class, still ANSI less than 15 kV, but that's just how we necessarily designate the voltages. So medium voltage, we use the MGC1, MGC2 as our standard. For anything larger than 6,900 volts, we immediately go to our digital uh, voltage regulator. And again, what the options are, once you get to UL Marine Society approved, we go full digital with our uh, Devo Devo light product. Let's take a look at some of the specific voltage regulators. Again, on the Mark 5X, that was standard on many of our older MJB, the, X, the MXB line, and the new MXBE product, 250 frame up to 300 EKW analog core manual regulation does have a power factor correcting controller option this is going to be a very busy slide but i want to point out two specific things the accuracy of this one for being an inexpensive voltage regulator is one half of one percent so 0 0.5 excuse me 0.5 percent uh, voltage regulation also operating temperature we this one is good up to 70 degrees c so if you're going to be building a package that's going to be utilizing an enclosure it's going to be in the south and a very openly exposed to the sun you might want to take a look at our voltage regulators all our our alternators versus some of our competitors you may get slightly better performance based upon our capabilities in that respect Next up is the MEC 20, which is a digital core manual regulation and has that same power factor correcting controller option. The thing to note here and why it's becoming very popular in use with even other manufacturers alternators, the accuracy on this one is one tenth of 1%. So extremely tight windows for accuracy on this one. Uh, also, still uh up still it's still good for 70 degrees c the other thing of particular note that becomes very very handy on this one it is does have 
a soft start ramping function that is adjustable from zero to 60 seconds. So when you have high motor loads that are gonna be applied on your package, this system will help mitigate that a little bit by you being able to, for you to utilize that ramp function. Going on to the uh, MGC-1, which is standard on our 500 and 560 frame, does use the Vericomp uh, as an option for that overboost capability. It's one of our older voltage regulators. So you'll note that it is plus or minus 1% accurate. And the operating temperature range on this one is only 60 degrees C. Its twin sister is the MGC-2 standard on the 630 frame and a little bit larger. Vericomp again available for that overboost for some more larger AC motor loads to improve your voltage drop. Same as its sister, the MGC-1, 1% voltage regulation, uh, accuracy, excuse me, and 60 degrees. One thing to note on the MGC-1 and the MGC-2, they do provide for a remote uh, rheostat, uh, and they also do allow for an auxiliary input if you had a power factor correction device you wanted to add to that. When you're considering going from digital to analog, some of the points that the benefits of a digital versus an analog is obviously there's no adjustment of the analog signal. It uses a digital reference value, so you don't need those external potentiometers. It has a wider range of settings for the sensing parameters. It uses a per unit standard setting. It doesn't drift on those parameter settings. You can copy and store your parameter settings. So once you've got the system tweaked, you can copy that. So if somebody comes by after the fact, make some adjustments on the regulator, you can always, you'll know what your set points were that was the preferred and you always go back to that. It does give you additional flexibility through the use of a laptop and software. You can add remove functions. Uh, gives you better performance because it does use the computational algorithms, much higher accuracy, and it does give you a defined history capture, which can be very ha handy in the uh, event of an uh, a care, uh, excuse me, uh, in the event of a catastrophic failure. Uh, you can go back, look at what the settings were on the system in that voltage regulator. So you can try to determine fault by simulation purposes after the fact. Morelli standard offering on our digital platform is the DVO and DVO Lite. For argument's sake, we're just going to concentrate on the uh, DVO. It is society approved, so we can use it across the board, including when we're going to parallel with utility or for marine society approval projects offshore. It's UL certified. It has a built-in power factor regulator. It uh, is capable of excitation limitation, field current regulation, has diode failure monitoring, which we'll go over diodes in a future webinar. Uh, onboard installation has Modbus capability, has input-output programmable function, so you can, you can user select additional features and it has a grid code function when you're going to parallel with utility. This is another very busy slide, but I'm gonna point out it is capable, the DVO is capable of either single or three phase sensing and performs four effective operating modes. It has the AVR function, it has a power factor regulation function, the reactive power function, and a field current regulator. The additional benefit of a digital voltage regulator in our Devo is it provides generator protective relaying function built in. Ours has field over voltage, field over current, generator over and under voltage, generator over current, loss of sensing, diode monitoring, generator over under excitation, under frequency limiter, and FRT detection and management. So in some instances, you can utilize this in lieu of using a protective relaying on your bus and or off of uh, your load lines. 
Now, when you compare the Devo to some of our uh, competitors, in this case, ABB Unitrol 1010, which we see offshore, and the Basler DEX 150 system that we see here commonly in North America, you'll note that the Devo compares very favorably with both of our competitors. Again, when you're looking at full forcing, we're at 70 degrees C and our competition in most instances is at 55 degrees C. We offer the same functional uh, parameters. Uh, we do have the Modbus as well as everybody else. So we do match up very, very well when you compare it to the ABB and the Basler systems. As Morelli continues and the industry continues to look more and more digitally because of the technology that's becoming more and more commonplace, some of our older uh, voltage regulators are going to be obsoleted. In particular case, the MEC 100 was kind of our staple for a number of years. So moving forward, the MEC 100 platform is going to be discontinued. Morelli will be developing a voltage regulator brochure and included in that will have um, field service interconnect type information. So as the MEC 100s are obsoleted and you are uh, replacing it with a Devo, you'll know how to wire in the Devo to how the MEC was set up in your system. I want to thank you today for your attendance and again your patience uh, with our uh, technical difficulties earlier. We appreciate you taking that time. Next week's webinar is going to be on PMG and excitation systems. Diodes are going to be covered on that one. Uh, we're going to leave this screen open for a little bit longer in case you did have some additional questions you wanted to pose to our applications engineers. We can add those to the list of uh, questions that will be going out later this afternoon to all the attendees. Again, thank you for your time. We appreciate your you as a customer, and we look forward to seeing you again very soon. Stay safe, everyone.